Hello? Hi, Tom, you the the webinar has started. So you are now live. We are still waiting for Joe to join us again after last session. So if we want to wait a few more minutes, we can do that or you're welcome to get started. Yeah, I got no backstage uh, icon. It just said join. Sorry. No worries. No worries. Well, you are live, Tom. So let me know if you want to just wait for Joe. We can hold off. Yeah, for, we'll wait for Joe. OK, sounds Thank great. You. I will let you know when he's here. I'll pop him up into the webinar. Okay, good enough. Thank you. Thanks, Tom. And here we are with Tom Fagan, and welcome to our Spectrum Management Certification uh, segment. And uh, we had Tom in last year. Uh, some of you have not met Tom, and some of you have, uh, but I want to just, you know, just high level, Tom focuses on spectrum management for DOD, NASA, and NOAA, uh, which includes systems engineering, satellite operations, spectrum allocation, and federal spectrum repurposing. Uh, welcome back, Tom. I know there's a great need for spectrum management certification and spectrum managers in general, and we've been seeing that from all angles. In fact, we have a whole panel uh, with uh, uh, the National Science Foundation tomorrow on that very subject. So uh, your, uh, your skill set is obviously in high demand. I'm sure you're uh, no surprise to you. You're, I'm sure you're quite busy right now, but we just love to hear you know, what your processes are. And of course, maybe a little Q and A at the at the end once you're done presenting, and to understand how uh, we can get more spectrum managers into the system. So, with that, uh, welcome Tom Fagan, and uh, feel free to jump right in. Well, thank you so much. Uh, let me go ahead and share. Make sure I am sharing the right screen. Are you seeing that, Joe? I am uh, spectrum management slide one. All right, super. Uh, I want to first uh, state I don't work for INARDI. Uh, this was a volunteer effort that uh, went over many, many years of, uh, I think it took 20 years to actually get this uh, rolled out. So we'll go through this and show you all about it. So uh, INARDI actually started out as a national Association for Radio and Telecommunications. Uh, as always, the phone goes off as soon as you get on the telco. Uh, for telecommunications and electromagnetics. Uh, and it was just the US. And uh, after many years and after the program developed, uh, they went international. And so now it's INARDI. Uh, so I started this back in, uh, I think it was 83, 84, long time ago. Uh, I was doing a lot of Navy programs and, and they wanted some certified uh, electromagnetic compatibility engineers of which I was one. Uh, so the first program out of the shoot back then was the electromagnetic compatibility uh, certification, uh, and that goes back to, you know, I think they started back in 82. I think I have that on another chart. Uh, later on, uh, they went through other programs, as you can see, telecommunications is in there, product safety, electrostatic discharge, uh, wireless device uh, professional, and 
the latest one is spectrum management. We're actually working on one uh, probably several years out on radar. Uh, we're trying to certify uh, radar folks. So we're uh, relatively uh, busy. And again, uh, uh, most all this is uh, volunteer effort. Uh, so this certification has only been out for uh, uh, just over two years. Uh, it was uh, created by the IEEE EMC Society. Uh, there's a technical committee number six, of which I'm uh, vice chair and uh, used to be chair of that one. Uh, on spectrum uh, management, they changed it to engineering because IEEE. Uh, Sarah, Dr. Sarah Seguin is the chair of that group now, uh, and uh, I'm the chair of the INRD Spectrum Management uh, Certification Program, and I've been chair of that for, oh my gosh, a long time. Uh, from INRD, the guy who actually works for INRD is Christian Thornton. Uh, he does a really, really good job uh, making sure uh, uh, everybody gets tested and looking at the uh, uh, reviewing the answers and, and getting back to me uh, on uh, more questions or ambiguity of questions. Uh, luckily, so far, we haven't had any problem with the question pool. So uh, I'm very thankful to uh, the team. I have about seven people uh, behind me that helped uh, write all the questions. It's, uh, it took, uh, what, nine years to get that done. <clears throat> like I said, uh, NARDI. Uh, started in 1982. Uh, the Navy, if you've heard of the uh, NAVLAP program, they wanted all the chambers uh, and all the people working uh, doing qualification testing for Navy to be certified. They went to NARDI and said, we need qualified certified EMC engineers. And we all jumped uh, in and uh, you know took the test. Uh, that was about 1988. Uh, and uh, that's what started all this. Uh, the FCC also, also authorized uh, uh, NARDI to do all the FCC commercial operator license testing. So if you have any of those uh, uh, certifications, that's all through uh, NARDI now. Uh, the FCC couldn't possibly do all those exams anymore. They, they ran out of money and, and people and everything else. Uh, the program after EMC I worked on, I worked on the uh, electrostatic discharge program. Uh, that was, uh, we finally got that one out in 1994. I'm ESD certified as well. My previous uh, career at Raytheon, before I retired, I was one of the ESD engineers and, and handled all the grounding and lightning and all the uh, uh, manufacturing of devices and making sure they weren't uh, susceptible to ESD. Uh, we, we don't want any ESD problems. So, uh, you know, I was approached, uh, I think it was uh, back in the year 2000, uh, uh, about uh, doing the spectrum management certification. And it took about nine years for for NARDI, they, they switched from NARDI to INARDI and, and some other things happened. And they finally said, you know, this is a really good idea. Go forth and create the question pool and and uh, come up with the program. And uh, it took took nine years. Uh, the team uh, has been pretty much together uh, the last 12 years and uh, we work together. We know each other quite well. and. And uh, we put together uh, a question pool. Uh, since that time, since 2019, uh, I'm told that there's over 400 certified spectrum managers now. So when you start seeing those resumes come across your desk, look and see if they put down INRD spectrum management uh, certified at the bottom. There should be a, a nice little uh, number after it telling them uh, where they are in the sequence. Uh, they're running about 10 uh, exams per month, uh, which is uh, pretty good. I'm glad it took off. Uh, we were kind of worried that COVID would have had a negative effect on this. But, you know, the, the nice folks at uh, INARDI started up a program where you can actually take the exam at your local uh, 
university, community college, or online, which is real interesting. Um, uh, are, just a real quick on the bottom of that last slide, there was a, uh, a kickoff noted in 2010 and another kickoff noted in 2019 um, or started versus kicked off. So you started designing it, you kicked it off in 2019. Yeah. And is there a course book or something of that there, nature? There is not a course book, uh, but uh, I think I, uh, up on the website, I know for sure there's some reference material and uh, you could go take a look at, uh, you know, a lot of the stuff would be like the FCC rules and regulations, uh, the NTIA Red Book. Uh, but what took so long was they wanted this uh, international thing, and we couldn't make it U.S. centric. Uh, so we had to scratch our head back about 2015 and and try and make it less U.S. centric and make it more international. Uh, and that's difficult. That that. You know, you have to put yourself out of what you do every day with the FCC or NTIA and pull your back out, you know, what questions, uh, you know, are more appropriate for somebody internationally. So uh, uh, we, we actually uh, had to look at that very much. We worked with INARDI uh, to go over the questions and how they were asked and how they were answered uh, to make sure that they were appropriate for uh, an international crowd. Uh, that took uh, about three, four years to do, which, uh, you know, nothing goes fast. You know that, uh, <laughs> you know, especially in the federal government, uh, I think it, it's just slower than molasses sometimes. And this process came and went and uh, uh, we, uh, I'll go through some of the question uh, areas, but yeah, we actually had to uh, change in midstream, which took a little bit of work and, you know, you, you scratch yeah. your head a few times. Would you say that the international references are, can be found at the, in the ITU and IEEE or how do you, is we there pulled, a... We pulled a lot from the ITU. Uh, we have a lot of generic questions. I, I'll go through some of those uh, coming up here. Uh, uh, but we couldn't make it all U.S. based, so it can't be all FCC, it can't be all NTIA, which which is how it started. Uh, in fact, all those questions are there now. Now, like like all question pools, uh, I think we have 800 questions now, and you can miss stuff that you may not know from another country and still pass the test. I mean, it, it's one of those things that. Okay, I really don't know the, uh, uh, let's say, just pick somebody like Norway. I don't know the spectrum regulations in Norway. You know, you can miss that question and still pass the test. And, and I'll go through some of that. Okay. So uh, the, the uh, INARDI uh, has things set up uh, in, in two uh, pieces, uh, spectrum management technicians and spectrum management engineers is how they run all their different programs. And we're uh, pretty much the same. A lot of the uh, uh, DOD uh, spectrum managers uh, uh, can pass the technician part uh, and may not be able to pass the engineering part because they just don't have the background on that. Uh, we had a lot of telecom folks uh, that may work in the field that can Pass the technician versus the engineering, so we split it up that way. Uh, and again, that that was a lot of work to you know make sure that all the questions that are good for technicians, uh, you know, they can all pass, and and those that have the engineering background can pass the engineering one. So when you actually go in this, you have to select, you know, do I want to be a certified technician or a certified engineer? Uh, the engineers luckily get to pull from the uh, whole question pool where the technicians, there were some things we felt uh, uh, and uh, just weren't applicable to uh, technicians. And, and all this was around to uh, the fact that if you see on the resume uh, that you have a uh, new candidate that's coming in, uh, let's say you have two candidates and and they're both pretty much equal, but one of them has on their resume that they're INARD, INARD certified engineer or technician, and the other one doesn't have it. 
Uh, we've done a good enough job that, uh, you know, as a, a past uh, hiring manager, I can look at that and say, I know that program, I trust Inardi. If they pass that test, that's the better candidate. So, you know, that's what we're trying to do. So uh, a lot of people asked uh, the question, why certify? And, and, and again, you know, I don't know how many thousands of resumes I've seen as I tried to hire my replacement before I retired from Raytheon. Uh, but, you know, you, you get all sorts of uh, really good people writing resumes uh, that really didn't know their stuff. Uh, this was another way to actually uh, know if they did know their stuff or not. Uh, so it, it's, you know, we all talk about metrics. This is, you know, like one of those metrics is something measurable. You pass this test and, and you barely, uh, we know you know your stuff. Uh, the the other thing that's nice about this is uh, yearly, uh, you, you have to renew yearly on this and and you have to say, uh, yay, barely, I've been involved in my field. I, I went, you know, got my training classes of NSMA uh, or other sources. Uh, you know, I kept current on all this and, and uh, I'm really uh, keeping abreast of everything with Spectrum and 5G and Wi-Fi and all that uh, GPS issues. Uh, and and you, you write that up, you submit it, and, and the folks at INARDI uh, know that you've been keeping up with it, uh, which is really nice. So we all know about spectrum management. I, I give this presentation to a lot of folks that have never heard about spectrum management or know anything about what we all do. I think everybody on the phone knows that uh, spectrum is uh, very congested, it's very contested. Uh, you, you've got uh, everybody out there trying to use everybody else's spectrum. And, and we heard a lot of that throughout the day today and we'll hear more about that tomorrow. Uh, and it's just not U.S. Uh, when we had to stop and uh, reshuffle everything to change from a uh, U.S.-based uh, certification program to an international one, we all know this is happening all over the world. Uh, one of the uh, uh, lawyers that was working with us, uh, reviewing everything, took a, a, some FRS radios to Italy and have them confiscated at the uh, airport because they weren't allowed in the country and and she was uh, uh, surely backing us on the certification program uh, not only for all the spectrum managers but for uh, a lot of people that uh, need to know what's going on there nationally. Uh, again, uh, spectrum management, uh, you know, we have a unique uh, group. We have lawyers, we have engineers, we have technicians, all trying to figure out how we can handle uh, the uh, electromagnetic spectrum. Uh, it's uh, advancing very quickly. In fact, this morning I had to break off this and go answer another question. Uh, yet another modulation uh, scheme uh, that we're looking at uh, for a new piece of hardware. Uh, I deal most, mainly in satellite work now, and uh, we have to go off and uh, figure out how we're going to handle that type of modulation in the spectrum world. And, and a lot of the folks up at the NTIA and DOD uh, are having a hard time keeping up with all these new modes of operations and modulation schemes. Uh, in fact, we're we're finding uh, well, probably everybody on the phone has heard the uh, need uh, for uh, more qualified spectrum managers. We used to pull a lot from uh, the DoD field, uh, but the uh, uh, just trying to get good. Uh, spectrum management engineers right now is very, very difficult. Uh, and, and, you know, the last bullet on here is uh, spectrum management is not taught anywhere uh, as any part of a university. There is uh, Fred Matos. I don't know if uh, you, you all probably know Fred Matos used to be uh, at NTIA. He's now teaching a spectrum management class, a very good one. 
Uh, I'm not sure if he's using us as the final exam or not. Uh, there was some talk about that. I guess I need to talk to Fred about that, but I think he's the only one actually teaching a spectrum management class that we found. Uh, topics to be covered. Uh, we go over all sorts of basic theory. Uh, of course, uh, you know, some engineering principles, uh, uh, spectrum allocation, uh, FCC, NTIA, and, and international uh, spectrum policies. Uh, basic radio uh, technology, uh, you know, what's a radar, you know, where would you use a radar, uh, satellite communications, uh, that's a, a big one for me lately. Uh, so this is uh, some of the topics that are covered. Uh, we get into EMC design. I, I have one group that thought they could run a, a very, very high powered uh, uh, test in uh, the GPS band and their enclosure consisted of plywood, uh, which doesn't stop any uh, RF from leaving. Uh, there's number two on the phone, sorry. Uh, the plywood doesn't stop anything. They did not know about shielding and, and how that stops the RF from getting out of the chamber. Uh, filters and grounding, bonding, all sorts of good stuff. I know tomorrow you have a uh, presentation on RF safety. We go over, uh, uh, we have a, a bunch of good RF safety uh, questions uh, in there. Uh, link budgets, uh, interference resolution. How do you solve the interference uh, problems? And, and I heard some of the previous speakers talk on uh, how they got everybody in the room and tried to figure out how to uh, solve those issues. Uh, spectrum site surveys. Uh, there's a lot of people that have figured out uh, that they really need to go out and do a, a spectrum uh, site survey, whether it's a new ground station antenna or point to point microwave. Uh, you don't want to put your antenna next to anything that would uh, be interfered with uh, very quickly. Uh, and then uh, program management. Uh, we get into procedures, design reviews, uh, ethics. Ethics was a uh, big one for us. We've all taken a, a hundred uh, ethics classes. Uh, just uh, I, I challenge you all to write down the uh, uh, spectrum management ethics. Uh, question with a bunch of answers. Uh, we found it very difficult. Uh, uh, it's, we can see ethics, uh, you know, questions, but spectrum, spectrum management ethics questions, that, that was a tough one. That took us quite a bit of uh, work to come up with those. Uh, so the certification requirements, there is an exam. Uh, like I said up front, uh, you can take the exam uh, well, INRD has exam locations uh, at their facility, but you can also sign up uh, at your local university, at your college. You do all this through INRD, they find somebody close to you, or you can actually do it at your own computer, uh, you know, from home or the library or wherever. They, they're very acceptable to that. Uh, you have to pass with a passing score of 70%. Uh, that allows uh, you to not know a certain uh, area, let's say uh, the spectrum regulations, like I said, in uh, Norway or Germany and, and still pass. Uh, and uh, so the engineer, uh, we have uh, normally uh, for uh, work experience is normally after nine years of experience, uh, in the field. Uh, for technicians, uh, it's uh, six years of really a work experience. And they go through all this when you enter in your uh, uh, request to be certified. They ask you all these questions and they find out where best to put you. Here's a question uh, that we, uh, I think I had the same one last year. What is Hynardy? Uh, and we know it's not a division of the FCC, uh, that, that's for sure. We know it's not part of the NTIA. Uh, and even though IEEE EMC Society uh, allowed us to work on this and, and uh, all the uh, program uh, folks that developed all this are from the EMC Society, 
it's actually part of Exemplar Global. So Exemplar Global is a global certification body uh, internationally. Uh, it used to be called RAB QSA. Uh, so you may have heard of one of those two. Uh, those folks are really good. They have uh, experts in linguistics and and uh, I think they've translated the questions into many different languages, uh, but they're, they have special people that, that just write questions and answers, and they make sure there's no ambiguity in the question or the answers. And uh, that was a real learning experience for us to figure out uh, how to write questions with no ambiguity. Uh, engineers are always good for, uh, is it, two or 2.1 or 1.9, and, and you don't do that. Uh, so each of these questions, and like I said, we have uh, well over 800. Uh, this one, the correct answer would be C. We have references uh, where we found uh, the information and the category. And the category is what you saw in the last two charts, one of those different categories. And we made sure that each of those categories has a sufficient question pool so that when they put the questions together, and we never see the, the exams, but they pull randomly from each of those, but it's populated so that each area on those last uh, pages has an equal representation of questions uh, for the exam. Uh, the exam is four hours in duration. You could take as little or as much of that four hours as you need to pass a test. Uh, all the questions are multiple choice, which makes it real easy to grade for them, I guess. Uh, and out of those 800 questions, uh, they pick 50. And each test is a random 50 uh, questions. Uh, and you should try and answer every single one of them. The uh, exam is open book, open notes. Uh, calculator is uh, allowed. Uh, I did hear from from a friend that said when he took it online, uh, you know, they they have to see that you're, you know, in front of the camera while you're taking the exam. Uh, he had everything on his computer, which makes it, uh, you know, tough to uh, uh, go back and forth. He only had one screen. So if you're going to take it on the computer from your home, it's best to have two screens, one with all your notes on one screen and, you know, the test on the other screen. Uh, passing mark, like I said before, is 70%. Uh, uh, if you don't pass it, and I don't know if anybody's actually failed it or not, uh, that would be a good question for me to ask. Uh, but if you do happen not to pass, you have to wait 90 days and you have to retake it. Uh, I don't know the cost. I try and stay away from anything financially. Uh, but the person to contact is uh, Christian Thornton. I have his info on the screen. Uh, he's at INRD. His phone number is right there. Uh, and uh, INRD is right there. If you go to INRD.org, you'll actually find it. Click on uh, Spectrum Management. Uh, they probably have a whole lot more info uh, than I have here. Uh, and uh, I think that's the last chart, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I think there's some questions. I heard some. Uh, there are. In. What do you got, Joe? So uh, uh, we've got a couple from Bo Backus. Is an RD working with the ITU for recognizing the certification program? Yes. Yes, they are working with the ITU. Bo is uh, uh, one of the first friends I know. Uh, hi, Bo. Uh, that actually uh, took the exam and passed it, and he is certified. So uh, uh, we have not been uh, involved in getting the ITU to recognize this, but I know Reb, uh, QSA, and Exemplar Global, Global have gone to uh, the ITU and are working that. Uh, they haven't asked us to help out on that, uh, and I have no status on that. Sorry, Bo. All right. Um, and then he also, uh, did you, uh, he also was asking, uh, 
you know, spectrum management has a wide range of fields that are, uh, you know, are applicable. Is there any thought being given towards a more specialized certification such as space spectrum management or international regulatory spectrum management or spectrum economics? Well, there actually is. It, it just takes time and effort. Uh, like I said, the one we're working on right now is radar because the IEEE radar uh, community really, really wants us to pull that together. And, and I'm not sharing that one, thankfully. Uh, but uh, one of the other fellows uh, is uh, sharing that one. I know Fred Matos uh, wanted to uh, expand that one and and you know, if Fred wants to go ahead uh, as part of his class and work on that, uh, he's more than welcome to it. I've uh, already worked on three of these. I don't know if I want to do another one. I don't know if I'm going to be working another 10 years to get this done. So uh, uh, we'll, we'll let somebody uh, younger and smarter than me uh, carry that forward if they so wish it. So, uh, but that's a good idea. It's been brought up. Uh, yeah, no, it should be real interesting. What, okay. what else you got? I see stuff flashing over here. Yeah, so um, Joseph Miller says he loves Einarty. I guess he's getting in that tattoo. Um, uh, oh, he, he's another one. Uh, I think Joe is qualified. Thank you, Joe. <laughs> um, Bo also mentions it's a good program. Appreciates the effort and it's very invaluable. Uh, Joseph Miller also notes that anyone has a question, he's done the uh, spectrum management and electromagnetic uh, compatibility certifications. His inf his contact information is in the chat um, as well, uh, but he uh, seems to be uh, quite a fan uh, of of the process. No, no, I'm both. Thank you, Joe. <laughs> um, so high level, you know, uh, I guess you know we're uh, there's obviously a, a keen amount of interest, and I know tomorrow we're going to be hearing from the National Science Foundation. They're working hard to see if we can get more certified spectrum managers out in the land. I know as, as a matter of rough metrics, you noted that there's, uh, I guess, since the launch in 2019, there's 400 certified spectrum managers, I guess, through the Inarte process, I assume we mean certified. Right, right. Um, I do know as, as a rough measure, our uh, LinkedIn, which is uh, people in the spectrum management world, if you join our, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a private, group, but anyone can join if you're, especially if you're tied to the spectrum industry. Um, we have over 750 members. So there's a lot of folks in spectrum management there who came to it probably through electrical engineering or just working as a coordinator or, you know, good on the list. Um, and so there's that crowd. Uh, uh, clearly there's crowds of people who work at places like ComSearch or name any one of the uh, equipment manufacturers or name any one of the uh, small or large uh, wireless operators. Uh, and you go down the list, there's a lot of spectrum management underway. And then that's not even counting the regulators and folks, not only the regulators, but folks in the uh, armed forces and uh, you know, even the forestry service or the Iraq people. Um, and that's just US, let alone international equivalents. So, you know, the, push, as you noted in your mission, to find some uniformity of skills for those who are interested, whether those are individuals or organizations. So folks know how to categorize or self-categorize oneself in terms of their skill set. Um, and clearly, there's some questions here about there might be added uh, deep uh, niches or deep, deep uh, uh, subcategories of folks who are real experts at, you know, filling out FCC coordination forms or doing something that may or may not, you know, translate to other elements of the broader spectrum certified management process. Um, but more the merrier, as far as we're aware, more the merrier, the more folks who are involved. There's, there's a great need, there's a great thirst. So um, uh, I guess, you know, we're, we're, you know, clearly inviting you to continue the dialogue with NSMA and its, its membership. Um, I don't see that there's any other questions in, in, in general, but you know, wanted to, you know, we're very delighted to have you, very pleased. It's a pleasure to have you here, and we hope we can continue the dialogue. Um, and I guess going back to a question you, you pretty much answered earlier, you said a lot of the criteria for the uh, exam are, is posted, I guess, on the Anarte site, the, the Red Book information, uh, the, the regulations, FCC regulations that you find 
uh, that Inerte finds to be relevant. Uh, and presumably there's some links to, I don't know, ITU proceedings. Oh, yeah. or, all, or the, all the links are there. Uh, and, and, you know, that's, that's half the fun was uh, coming up with all the links and making sure they're applicable. So uh, yeah. I, I will put a plug out, you know, I have talked to the National Science Foundation. I, I'm glad they're part of this. Uh, and uh, I would encourage people to get certified. I would like the feedback like I've had from uh, uh, Joe and Bo, uh, of course, uh, you know, anytime you get that feedback, you, you know you've done a good job. Uh, and if, if you have questions, I did put a question example in there. If you have a uh, good question that you think would be applicable to this, uh, we're always looking for more questions. Uh, you know, well, if we get enough on the international side uh, or FCC side, maybe we can, uh, you know, open up a subcategory of this, maybe a uh, FCC endorsement or NTIA endorsement or ITU endorsement. Uh, but it just takes that, that, you know, number of questions uh, to be pulled together and and uh, somebody to uh, round them all up and check them all out. It's a long process. It is for sure. I know when I was at the uh, Institute for Communications Law Studies, which was part of my, uh, where I got my Juris Doctor, there was uh, an inst the, the Institute uh, at Catholic University School of Law, Columbus School of Law. I think they've changed the name now to something else, but there was a course, FCC Practice and Procedure, where you went very deep, right. you know. Uh, um, and I think that's where some of the, uh, you know, those types of equivalents where folks are very specialized. Um, so that, you know, that's of interest. Uh, you mentioned the book, the exam is open book. Does that mean people can get on the internet or you have to bring your books to the exam? Well, that, you know, back, back in the days, back in the eighties, when I took the EMC exam, uh, there was no internet. So it was open book and, and you could still have open book. I would hate to lug around, uh, you know, the FCC rules and regulations, uh, was that, 37 volumes and the NTIA Red Book, uh, you know, that's another three or four inches there. Uh, uh, by the time you look stuff up, uh, you know, you might have a 12 foot stack of uh, material. Uh, yes, uh, you know, if you have a computer, I believe you could use the internet. Uh, I know uh, uh, some people, uh, uh, and Bo and Joe, I know you took the class. I don't know if you took it in person or if you took it uh, online. Uh, if you take it online, I think you need two screens, one for your notes and one for the camera to look at you. So, uh, okay, you can take it online. Can you have open book when you're online? Okay, so you can uh, use the links. Uh, and any notes okay so so uh, the short answer is you can it just you know and uh yeah. or, or you can look like arnold schwarzenegger and carry around yeah. <laughs> stacks of books you yeah gotta get certified in phys ed at the same time yeah uh it, like like uh who is it joe said two monitors uh where he works out because you could search on one while there so i guess you have to have a camera and they have to watch you to make sure you're the one taking the exam. I believe that's what I've heard. Uh, you know, like any of these remote things, yes, there's a thumbs up, thank you. So, uh, you know, having having written uh, and reviewed all the 800 questions, uh, you know, I got mine by, uh, you know, 20 years worth of work. So uh, I didn't take the exam myself, but I kind of know the answer. So it's unfair of me to take it, but. I am certified with number 001. So, you know, that's pretty good. <laughs> Not for nothing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. Well, great. Um, well, uh, you know, again, thank you for your particip participation. I think, you know, this is a, a, a continuing area of high interest. This is a continuing area of growth. Uh, so I think we're all quite interested in making sure that what you're doing uh, continues and expands. And uh, oh, fantastic. We, yeah, we appreciate you coming. Yeah. Um, hold on. There's seven new messages. Let me make oh, sure. Uh, It'd be interesting to find out how many in the membership outside of uh, Joe and uh, Bo have actually taken the exam and been certified. Yeah. Is that something we could find out? Can you say that again? 
I, is there a way to ask the membership uh, how many people have taken the exam and passed it? We could take a poll. Um, that's a great question. We could take a poll. Um, uh, I don't know if uh, of the folks on this segment are uh, all willing to enable to, to chat, uh, put it in the chat. Oh, but, we could do it later on. It'd be interesting yeah. to find out. Yeah, and, sure. and again, uh, you know, send me an email if you have any feedback or any questions. Uh, you know, my email's on, uh, what was it, the first page or something like that? Yeah. Yeah. And all these materials will be posted on our uh, uh, website and uh, as well as the recording. So I think we're in good stead for sure. Super. Uh, all right. Well, thank you again. It's quite a pleasure. Uh, we'll play some of our uh, 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 pre-programmed uh, information about NSMA right after this segment. If you just stay on the segment. Uh, those those uh, those graphics and recordings will play uh, tomorrow morning. Uh, we open up with State of the Spectrum at 9.05 a.m. with Evelyn Ramali, uh, a former NTIA official who's a partner at Wilkinson Barker Nauer, as well as Sean Conway, a partner at Wilkinson Barker Nauer. This was put together by Brian Tremont, who's also a partner there who spent uh, many years presenting the NSMA. And then we'll go through a spectrum management and human RF exposure panel with George Kaiser and Mariana Village Archipald and myself. Uh, we'll have Dr. David Morris from the National Science Foundation on Federal Government Spectrum Management Needs. In the afternoon, we'll have Art DeLeon, U.S. Navy Department of Navy Strategic Spectrum Policy on Spectrum Modernization. We'll have a six gigahertz industry proposals panel with Mark Gibson from ComSearch and Mike Mulcahy from Encina. There will be a scientific and meteorological use of spectrum panel with Dr. Jordan Gerth, University of Wisconsin. He's also affiliated with uh, NOAA. And there will be a working group three status update from David Meyer uh, of ComSearch, a former president and former board member, and a current board member as well. And that's where we develop our guidelines. So uh, again, uh, that's our program for tomorrow. Uh, again, thank you, Tom, for participating. As always, we appreciate your, uh, your efforts and your hard work. And Thank you all for being on board today and look forward to seeing, seeing everyone tomorrow morning. Thanks all. Thank you.